have been musical director, for example, with George Benson. Yeah. Now, to somebody who doesn't know anything about music, what is the musical director doing? Um, well, primarily rehearsing the band through new tunes, maybe at the sound check when George is not there, just to get them ready for him. Did you write the arrangements? Um, generally, no. I haven't had much experience doing that with him. Um, I've done some arranging for different artists I worked with. I did some for Jose Feliciano when I worked with him. And, you know, maybe in the future with George I'll be doing some arrangements. But that and maybe if we work with uh, string orchestras, I do the conducting, conducting. for that. Now, I, s I, I know that you have not only accompanied George Benson, but also Lee Rittenauer. Now, there's a difference between the, the two guitar players, okay, but there must have been a difference. Yeah, totally different, yeah. Um, it's funny because I hadn't, I had listened to Lee a little bit when he first started and hadn't, didn't really know much about him, you know, of, of recent times. And he called in, in 88, and I thought, well, <laughs> seems like he'd be good. But the experience of working with him was, is really good because he's a, he's a master craftsman. He's a very good musician and a very good organizer of musicians. He knows how to put good combinations of musicians together. George is, he's a natural talent. You know, he's one of these people who, he just hears it and, and plays it, you know? He doesn't really think much about what he's doing. It's just that kind of thing. It's, they're two good talents, but they're coming from different places. Maybe Lee's, you know, he's really cultivated his thing, and, and George's, I think, is maybe more of a natural ability. You've been touring with Jose Feliciano. You have been touring with the GRP All-Stars. Mm -hmm. uh, that must have been a very tough job, because it's probably not the easiest job in the world to play keyboards together with Dave Grusin, I could imagine. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's... Um... It's a challenge, but it's a joy because Dave Grusin is a master, and he's really a master of of all aspects of music. You know, accompanying and soloing and arranging, and it's it's like going to school. It's like yeah. you know, going to the master class or something. You have, of course, certainly the desire to front your own group. I mean, you have Spies, your co-leader in the group. Yeah, yeah, we would like to get that going. Um, it's kind of difficult right now because um, the members of the band are located all over the United States, so it's, it's hard to, to put a tour together until maybe, it, maybe the group is a little more popular or we can get some kind of support to, the monetary support to go out. Um, that's, my goal is to play with my peers, people my own age, and play original music you know, and, and stuff that's based in improvisation. That's really my But you also uh, thing. go into the writing, of course. To write yeah. The material for this group will be written by the members of the group. Yeah, right? yeah, that's, that's very important. Um, I feel like I'm just starting as a writer. I feel like I've been playing a long time, but composition doesn't come so easily to me. You know, sometimes I can write a tune in five minutes, sometimes it takes me five years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you you got you have your tunes that took that time? Yeah, there's one tune we played tonight um, uh, from a rainy night. I wrote that in 1982, and it didn't get recorded until 1990. And it kind of you know it kind of underwent a transformation in that period of time as to just how it would be performed.
when do we have to start with your career? At what age did you start to get interested in music? Um, interested. I, I think I was interested ever since I can remember, which was maybe four or five years old. I started playing saxophone first. So it started on saxophone. Your father and your grandfather were both musicians. Correct. And I think, if I'm not wrong, your grandfather, tell me a little bit about your grandfather. Who did he play with? He played with people like Chewberry. He was actually in college, uh, went to college with Chewberry. And um, that's Waller and, you know, people like that. He played in the Boston area. So when people came to town, he would play with them. He passed away right before I was born. And your father, also a musician, what does he, what does he play, saxophone? Saxophone, and he's played with a lot of rhythm and blues, kind of And groups. he was your first teacher, of course. Uh -huh. Saxophone, okay, but how come you quit saxophone and start with drums? Well, my grandfather, as I said, was a drummer, so his drums were in the house. Yes. And uh, I s my teeth came out, you know, like how that happens. Oh, the first, the first, first teeth. Set of teeth, right. So um, I just picked up the drums after that. That's amazing. And with 11 years of age, you were already the big, you played with, who really discovered this talent? Um, it was a combination of maybe three people. Um, Clark Terry was one of the first people to ever let me play. And um, he brought me to the Wichita, Kansas Jazz Festival where I was a guest with his band. How old were you then? I was 10 then, but before that, Rasan Roland Kirk was actually the very first person to ever let me play on stage, and first saxophone, and like tambourine, whatever. Every time he came to town, he'd have me come up and do something. So then one year he came and I was playing drums. It was the first time I ever played on a stage. Um, I must have been about seven or eight when I played drums with him for the first time. And uh, Illinois Jaquette. He probably was one of the first people, him and Rossan and my father, to inspire me to play saxophone. But he was playing a Sunday matinee, so my father took me when I was five, and I came home and said I wanted to play. <laughs> but as a drummer, is that does that mean instead of going out to the movies, you have to stay home and practice? I mean, that must have. Isn't no. that terrible? No, I, I didn't. I never practiced that much. No. To this day, I I need to practice right now. I just. <laughs> I've never, since I left home when I was 18, I'm 25 now, and since I left home, I've never had a drum set set up where I live to practice. No drums at home? No. Not even the, the practice pads, nothing? Mm-mm. <laughs> Just on the gig. That's not so, bad. Yeah, I, well, I mean, you know, if, I'd probably be a lot better if I practiced, but I haven't really practiced since then. What I do is, like, if I have a gig coming up, and there are songs specifically I need to learn or a certain kind of feeling you know, that I need to play. I'll go you know, in, in the studio or someplace, set up some drums and practice whatever I need to learn for that specific gig.
Terry Lynn Carrington, Peter O'Mara, Anthony Jackson.